Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a red black rotten mouth viper sacrifice deck which gets to play with some of the new sacrifice synergies from Duskmorn although the goal is still to get the viper in play as quickly as possible a six mana six six although it gets a one mana discount for each non-land permanent we sacrifice as we cast it which means we can often play the viper on turn three already in this deck since our deck is filled with cheap permanents that will often generate an additional permanent when they enter so we can uh, cheaply deploy the viper and then when it enters or attacks we can put an additional blight counter on the viper so those blight counters will stack up over time and then the opponent has to either lose for life sacrifice a non-land permanent or a discard a card for each one of those blight counters so it starts out with one bad choice but they will quickly add up over time so the sooner we get the viper in play the better if we can also immediately attack with the viper if we can give it haste that's also pretty awesome which is why we're playing a two copies of enduring courage this four mana three three will give other creatures Creatures plus two plus so and haste until end of turn when they enter and it's one of those glimmer creatures so even if it dies we can still return it in the form of an enchantment so hopefully it doesn't get exiled instead and then we're also playing the full set of Disturbing Mirth, a two-mana enchantment. When it enters, we may sacrifice another enchantment or creature. And if we do, draw two cards. And then when we later sacrifice this enchantment, we also get to Manifest Dread. So we'll get an additional 2-2 creature, which will play well with our other sacrifice synergies. And then we're also playing two copies of Nowhere to Run as a decent removal spell that will leave behind an enchantment that we can also maybe sacrifice to our various sacrifice synergies. Also specifically powerful against the Aura strategies which are quite popular in Best of One, so we can deny potential ward and hexproof from the opponent. And it's also fine against Monorad Aggro, since shrinking down their creatures means we won't be taking quite as much damage. And then another new card is the Clockwork Percussionist, a 1-1 artifact creature with haste, and when it dies we get to exile the top card of our library, and we may play it until the end of our next turn, so we do have a decent amount of time to still deploy it, and we also don't mind sacrificing the Percussionist. Being an artifact also quite important to set up our Gleeful Demolition, which needs to destroy one of our artifacts if we want to make three 1-1 Goblin tokens, so destroying our own Percussionist is good value, or we could sacrifice the token we get from Blacksmith's talent which may seem a little strange in this deck but is actually pretty decent an enchantment that will leave behind a sword token and then we can also spend mana leveling it up first letting us equip things for free and then on level three we can also give our equipped creatures double strike and haste so that's potentially another way to give a rotten mouth viper haste if we play it later in the game and then of course it's also an enchantment as well as an artifact we can sacrifice to our various effects so turn one talent can still sacrifice it to a turn two disturbing mirth the artifact we can sacrifice sacrifice to fanatical offering to draw two and make a map token and then of course two permanents for the viper as well and then we've got the full set of spiteful hex mage which will come with a cursed roll token so once again two permanents for just one mana sometimes we want to put the cursed roll on the hex mage itself and then we can maybe sacrifice it turn two to a disturbing mirth so we're left with a three two hex mage while drawing two cards that's pretty good sometimes we can put the cursed roll on a one one creature like the percussionist and then we don't really mind that it's a one one since it's already a one one and then we're still left with a three two and uh, putting it on a greedy free Freebooter is pretty good too. Freebooter also a card we don't mind sacrificing as it will leave behind a treasure token and let us scry one. So that's potentially another artifact to set up our gleeful demolition. And then Torch the Tower is perfect here as well since there's plenty of artifacts and enchantments we can sacrifice to set up bargain. And it's also just a very well positioned card in the current meta. And then at three mana, two copies of Braids as another way to sacrifice permanents to draw cards. So we can once again maybe sacrifice artifacts and enchantments, which the opponent may not have. So we're guaranteed to draw cards and make them lose two life as well. And then we're only playing 20 lands. We do have a relatively low curve outside of maybe the Enduring Courage, which can sometimes be a little tricky to play. But I think it's still worth it since it also synergizes quite well with our Gleeful Demolition. If we can make three Goblin Tokens with Courage in play, they will all get a lot of extra power and can immediately attack. So that's a lot of damage. And then, of course, a synergy with a Rotten Mouth Viper. And then the mana base does get to run four copies of the Blaze Mire Verge. So that also helps fix our colors. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Good mix of removal, sacrifice fodder, card draw, and the viper. Facing red aggro, so definitely a difficult matchup for us. And turn one, I'll keep up torch. Don't really want to just take out Swiss Spear one for one. Need to try and take out their creature when they're trying to cast a pump spell. 
But of course with Swiss Spear they could have more than one. Their opponent shocking first. They still can't really afford to go all in since we are representing cut down. And then now could play Freebooter, keep a torch. Or we could just cast a nowhere to run. I'll go with Freebooter, keep a torch. And then next turn I can maybe offering and keep up nowhere to run at the same time. And this will also give us an enchantment we can eventually sack to the Viper, since we don't really need the effect in this matchup. So again, no blocks. And I probably wouldn't be able to torch the tower even if they go for it. Since they might have multiple ways to enable prowess. So yeah, that's kind of the situation we wanted to avoid. And Lightning Strike, so they are a more traditional burn deck. Maybe not playing the Leyline version. So we're at 6, but our opponent is down to 2 cards in hands. And then now we're just going to play it safe, take out a Swiss Spear. While they cannot pump it. And I think I even keep up Torch the Tower as opposed to playing Percussionist. Although playing Percussionist makes it easier to deploy the Viper next turn. I'm mostly worried about flying creatures like Slickshot. But I guess it's worth it here. And then... I'll just hit for one. But it's got a heart fire. Good to exile with Torture Tower. Okay. So don't mind attacking. Might of the Meek. We respond with Torch. No need to bargain. So they don't even get to draw. And we still get to play Viper. And then Disturbing Mirth. Maybe not the best card here to keep since I'll exile it with the Percussionist and I don't have anything I actively want to sacrifice. Since the treasure token doesn't work with Mirth, it has to be creature or enchantment. So next turn we can play a Sulphur Springs instead. And this Viper's hopefully gonna close out the game pretty quickly for us. So they just took 4 damage. And Blacksmith's Talent also a way to maybe give Viper haste if we level it up all the way. For now, I guess I'm okay leveling up and then suiting up the Viper for free with the sword. Next turn it would have double strike. Or we can just attack, keep up all our instants. Nah, I think I like leveling up here. So now they cannot afford to just take 8 damage, they'll have to discard. And Pono got rid of a Lightning Strike, so they were close to burning us out. They maybe should have just gone for Lightning Strike my face and then hoped to top deck another Lightning Strike. Is it possible they misclicked? And just a Might of the Meek for the redraw. Could have sacrificed my Viper in response to deny the card draw, but that seems like a mistake. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Multiple ways to generate artifacts. I think we start with the talents. Since Freebooter first needs to die before we can demolition. And then, yeah, we're looking at turn 3 Viper. Now we could also destroy our own Percussionist. Could be awkward if they have a bounce spell for it, because then they can deny the goblins. So it seems safer to just demolition the sword. Although I guess they could still bounce my non-creature permanent if it's the blue one drop. So we can maybe start by attacking, see if we detect a pause. Hmm. Did seem like they might have something, although it could also just be a cantrip. 
So I'll still try it here. Alright, that worked. But yeah, the blue bounce spell gifting us a fish could have bounced our sword in response. And then now we can cast a very cheap Viper. Still have to watch out for counter spells, of course. But in the meantime, we're applying a good amount of pressure. So I don't really feel the need to go for Viper until we're certain that it's going to resolve. Opponent bouncing a Goblin for one mana. Okay, so second main Viper feels better now, although it could still get bounced, of course. I guess I can demolition the percussionist first, just to make some more goblin tokens. And then next turn I can play the talent, and then for now play viper, leaving one goblin in play. Yeah, the fact that we are worried about counter spells makes me want to do this, although if they're just keeping up counter spells, they're not going to beat all these 1 1 goblins, is the thing. So maybe I should. Just play the talent for now. And then until they tap out for maybe a hot gin, we can just keep getting in with our goblins. That's going to be an up the beanstalk. So yeah, this is kind of the mono blue splashing green for up the beanstalk, playing cards like Eddiemurk Crab and uh, Tolarian Terror, which can trigger beanstalk. So I'm not really inclined to want to play Viper and have it bounced. So instead, probably just play Freebooter here. Although we are getting to the point where I have enough other stuff to sacrifice besides the goblins that it's maybe worth it. Sack double talents, sword, Freebooter, and one goblin. Yeah, I guess that's fine. We'll get a replacement treasure as well. And try and find a third lane. Torture Tower is not great in this matchup. Their creatures are 5-5. Five, five. In combination with Nowhere to Run, I guess we could take out one of their creatures, but we'll see how this works out. So they have only the one instant in Graveyard, another Beanstalk. Not really what they need. If they want to run out Eddiemurk Cram, for instance, to tap down the Viper. And if they have another Ephara's Dispersal, that's fine by me. And yeah, opponent explodes, so they must have been out of answers here. Take 10 damage, and then the Viper trigger is going to add up as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing a 1 mana creature or enchantment to sank to Disturbing Mirth. And no artifact for demolition. So this hand's a little awkward. Now we can sack Mirth to Bargain Torture Tower. But still, I think we can do better. This hand will do. Opponent on aggro with a Ginger Brute. We'll start with a Freebooter. Next turn we can double spell Hex Mage and Talent and set up a turn 3 Viper, which against red aggro could be pretty effective. They don't tend to have answers to a 6 6. I see a Legion Extruder, so it's more of an artifact deck. Do we want Gleeful Demolition? Yeah, I don't mind. We'll have plenty of artifacts to sacrifice here. So now that we drew Demolition and lost a Freebooter, I mean, I can still put the Roll Token on Hex Mage itself, and that's fine. So I'll still go for Talents plus Hex Mage. And then I cannot quite cast a Viper since I need to sack the treasure for mana, as well as sacrificing it as an additional permanent. So we'll have to wait one more turn. They are playing green as well. So our opponent could make a Golem for two mana, sacking the Ginger Brute. They've got a Haywire Might. Can go after artifacts and enchantments. Not too bothered if they blow anything up. They're most likely just going to make a Golem. Alright, Disturbing Mirth. Can also sank the Cursed Roll token. Do we prefer that? So play Disturbing Mirth. 
One, two, three, four, five. Sack everything to play Viper. Or we can Gleeful Demolition. Although I have to watch out for Haywire Mites blowing up my artifact and response. So that's maybe not gonna work out here. So yeah, maybe playing Disturbing Mirth to draw a few more cards first makes sense. Alternatively, if I play Viper, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess I could keep the Hex Mage and an artifact. Might still be better. Keep my treasure token, so I have something to target with demolition, and in general, a treasure is probably more useful than the sword token. Trigger Viper, and then Hex Mage could attack, maybe trading for a Golem token. Alright, Pono's gonna sack the Ginger Brute, make a 3 3, and trade. That's fine. So, can they find an answer to the Viper, is the question. Tough cookie. Makes sense in an artifact deck. And we get to untap. Alright, so step one attack with a Viper. They can make a Golem and basically trade their entire board for my Viper. But then we can safely cast our Demolition and Disturbing Mirth. Could also use Demolition on the opponent's stuff for what it's worth. Just one mana destroy an artifact. But I think I'm going to be better off making Goblin Tokens. Alright, so that's what they're going with. Triple Block Viper. That's fine. Make some Goblins. And draw more cards. Alright, can still play the Hex Mage. So we're back on the board. Yeah, maybe in hindsight just using Demolition as removal could have worked out fine too, just to keep the Viper going. Opponent's gonna author Haywire Might, so they can keep churning out 3-3s. Three Torture Tower can blow one up, so that's good. Still don't want to attack with the 1-1s because of Mishra's Foundry as well. Although I guess they have to decide between one or the other. Since they won't have the mana to, let's say, animate Foundry, and then if we try and take it out, still tap it for mana to activate the Extruder, since it's two mana to activate it. Alright, so before blockers, we can Torch with Bargain. Sacking Disturbing Mirth, so we get to Manifest. And sure, Torch the Tower it is. Would have been a fine draw as well. And then we still get to Scry. Blacksmith's talent can play it and start leveling it up. Feels like we still have better top decks. Opponent correctly trades for the token with a roll token since it's better for potential sacrifice synergies. Gains two up to seven. And let's see here. They can still sack Mishra's Foundry to make a 3-3. So it's just Hex Mage attacking here. So yeah, they did get good value out of the Legion Extruder in the end. But their deck was all cheap artifacts. So they may as well just trade. Or they can jump and then sacrifice. Preventing the damage while making a 3-3 for next turn. Also makes sense. And they found another Legion Extruder, so they can take out Hex Mage. And now Extruder can sack the other Extruder. So the game goes on. Take a Disturbing Mirth. Sack my Goblin. And there's a Viper, perfect. Play it, sacking. Disturbing Mirth and Phase Down card is fine. Courage can still attack. 
And then the Manifest Dread also gets the plus two power bonus and haste. Although sadly don't get to see it in action here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand has potential. We can make an artifact with Freebooter eventually, which sets up Demolition, which is good before and after we play Enduring Courage. Ideally after, but uh, the Courage can also help set up the Viper. So we'll need to draw a few more lands, and hopefully one Torture Tower is enough to survive in the meantime. Although against Leyline, that may not be the case. All right, pass with Torch available. Hope they commit too many pump spells on the Hardfire Hero and we get to punish them. We'll need to keep up Torch at all times, pretty much. All right, but not doing anything. So play Freebooter and pass. And now I can block, forcing them to cast a pump spell. Is this a shock? All right, that's fine. I'll take my Scrined Treasure Token, keep a land. Opponent did find a second lane, so now things can get a little bit more dangerous. Swiss Spear gives him a second creature to pump, so now we could be in trouble. Still gonna take it. And scam, so plenty of creatures here. So yeah, one Torture Tower may not be enough. But we can demolition the treasure token. And then if I don't need to torch a tower, I can still fanatical offering sacking a goblin. But yeah, I probably don't want to block more than one creature. Right, Monstrous Rage Heartfire Hero. And then we'll torch a tower response. But they still get to pump this camp here. And Felonious Rage, that one doesn't actually do anything. If they target its Hardfire Hero, since it gets exiled here. So another case of the red player not reading the cards. Had they gone all in on Scamp, we might have been in a lot more trouble. So they can sack Scamp, we go to 1, which is not 0. So they had lethal. And a detective left over. Alright, so I'm definitely not going to be able to play Enduring Courage first. So if I try and play the Viper, I'm dead on board, since they can just attack all out. Cannot play Freebooter and Viper to make a treasure, because we'll have to pay life to the Sulphur Springs. So I think my only play is play Percussionists and pass. I mean, I could try to play Viper, hoping Percussionist exiles a land I can still play to play Freebooter, but it has to be a Black Source specifically that's untapped, so I'll just pass. Opponent's got a Scamp, so that's going to be tricky to survive. One way to survive Scamp is by sacking my creature after blocking it. All right, opponent had a Cell Sword anyway, so it didn't matter. Can see what we would have drawn off percussionist out of curiosity. A land, so as it turns out, could have gone for percussionist into Viper, exile land, and then still play a one drop, but uh, we still would have died. Nowhere to run in response to the uh, cell sword on scam could have maybe saved us. So yeah, we still had potential outs there, but they were pretty slim. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is functional against aggro with two removal spells and some pressure, but it's pretty unexciting everywhere else. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of aggro decks in the format, so I'll give it a shot. And then we want to play Percussionist first and then put the roll token from Hexmage on it, so we'll be left with a 3-2. Opponents with turn one Swamp Nightmare can discard a land. And play Percussionists. So next turn, this makes black, so we could run out double Hex Mage, putting both roll tokens on the Percussionist. If we have a Viper in hand, we prefer spreading out the roll tokens. But uh, in this case, we might just want to end up with more high-powered creatures. 
But yeah, I guess mono black this hand's not particularly great. They probably take Torture Tower as a cheap answer to the bat. And then we can still make the play of double hex mage. Alright, Viper's a great draw. Although can expect the opponent to have answers to it. So step one might be to attack with percussionists. And then I don't want to put all my roll tokens on it. So we'll put one on the Hex Mage, which may seem weird, but with Viper it makes sense. So now they have removal, they're more likely to want to take out the 3-2 Hex Mage, which is the one that contributes the least towards casting the Viper. And yeah, go for the Throat, we're happy to see, since that's a great answer to the Viper. So now attack, and then I can still know where to run the Bats. And play Viper. Although it's not great in the face of a Liliana minusing, which they could easily have. Just missing the third lane for it. So hopefully that's not the case. At least Braids is a decent follow-up. Alright, cross our fingers. They can play all the discard effects they want, as long as they don't touch the Viper. Opponent sacks the Nightmare to Scry, so that's maybe helping them find a third land for Liliana if they have it. It's a bit of a nombo here. Other versions of this deck also play Hopeless Nightmare since it does synergize quite well with Viper. But I needed to increase my artifact count for Gleeful Demolition, so I ended up on the talent instead. Alright, is there Liliana? If they had it, they would have slammed it down by now. It's gonna be a Bandit's Talent clearing Torsha Tower. That's fine. And level it up. Okay, we get to untap with Viper, which is what we wanted. Attack, play Braids. I may as well empty my hand since they might have more discard effects. Although Rotomouth Viper is doing the discarding right now. Possible they have a Shield Root to try and stabilize. But we'll still get a nice attack in with a Viper if that's the case. So that's probably still a game we're winning. Opponent ditching two discard spells. And no sacrifice. Although maybe sacking a land is worth it since we only have two four drops we can draw into. And they just got rid of their discard effects. Opponent actually sacking a land for another bandit's talent. And they should just be dead here. Can play talent and equip for two mana. So hit you for 10, and then they would have to discard and sack both talents just to stay at one life, and that's gonna do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems functional. Freebooter into Disturbing Mirth. And then Nowhere to Run can be quite good in the Aura matchup specifically, but also against Mono Red. Shrinking down their creature can prevent taking damage. Opponent on what looks to be a white tokens deck instead. So, quite opposites, nowhere to run. Not gonna be particularly good here. But we'll start with Disturbing Mirth. Next turn can play another one, sacking the first to manifest. And a Gleeful Demolition seems fine when we have Percussionists and a Treasure to Sacrifice. Can also sack the roll token from Hex Mage to Disturbing Mirth, but I think I would rather manifest. So we can initially out token the tokens deck. So what do we like? Yeah, I think it's Demolition the Treasure, play another Disturbing Mirth, as opposed to can play all three one drops, attack with percussionist, destroy it with my own demolition, after maybe putting a roll on it with a hex mage. I mean that's not bad either. Sure. Could see them trade as well. Which would make our plan look a little worse. Now if we had a Rotomouth Viper in hand, I wouldn't really want to destroy two permanents just to make three tokens. Then we would probably keep the roll token on the Hex Mage. And we'll have a land waiting for us next turn. Okay, so can keep drawing cards and hopefully find a Viper soon. Opponent passes, we find another Demolition. So, step one, probably attack, and see what's up. 
Could see a removal on Hexmage. Maybe make a, another token as well. Could already know where to run here, but maybe they'll double block Hexmage. They're just going to take the trades. That's fine. So we'll keep drawing. And Swamp manifested. And sure, we'll uh, demolition the treasure at this point. Play Talents, and then we can start leveling that up as well. Alright, so hopefully we can do a bit of damage before Sunfall comes down. It's going to be an Overlord making a pair of 2-1s. Can clear those pretty easily. And yeah, I'm terrified of a Sunfall here, so... Just gonna remove their stuff. Could bargain sacking Disturbing Mirth to make another 2-2, two -two, but that might be asking for trouble. So maybe it's just double nowhere to run for now. And then at least torching sacking Mirth will give me a 2-2 two -two post Sunfall. Although if they have it, we probably lose. Carrot Cake? Alright, Carrot Cake is beatable. So maybe just missing a land 5. And Fanatical offering the draw. So what's our plan? Still don't really want to sack the Disturbing Mirth. So attack all out, opponent sacks up to 11, has 2 blockers, chump chump, take 4. So they're still very much alive. At least we can sack 2 Fanatical offering to draw. So... Could be fine to equip a sword on a 1-1 token. Although then I would prefer just leveling up the talents to get that going. Give future creatures haste, which could be a way to sneak in a victory. So yeah, tricky spot. Let's just start by attacking. I mean, I'm probably still fine casting the fanatical offering before they get a chance to cast a sunfall, just to maybe hit a land drop for a turn. Their opponent does go for the carrot cake. And keeps on top. So yeah, if we see them chump 3-2 two, and 2-2, two, two, we know for a fact Sunfall's happening. So I can offering now Sanka Goblin. Find another Hex Mage, not particularly helpful. So could still go exploring with the map. Or could keep that to power up a creature afterwards. Yeah, I guess we'll pass. Five mana, there's Sunfall, no surprise. And we're also lacking a target to cast Torch in the first place. Otherwise we could have at least manifested. So, need to get back on the board, but it's going to be very difficult now. So, Freebooter, Hex Mage. Put a roll token on Freebooter. And level up. And then next turn we could level up again for haste. And then there might be a small window where top decking a viper can do some serious damage. Caretaker's talents. Not great with incubator tokens since that would just be a 0 0. And yeah, Overlord, we can double torch. Probably should have put an upkeep stop so I could have scryed before taking my draw step. Since I actually wouldn't mind an untapped land here so I can level up the talent once again. Although they can also animate the Incubator, I guess. So what's our play? I can sack a Cursed Roll to Torture Tower. And I can sack the Disturbing Mirth as well. Braids might be fine. I can sack Enchantments. So, can manifest Dread here and then flip Braid's face up right away. And Disturbing Mirth is a fine draw. So not really interested in attacking into the 5-5. But I will turn face up. Uh, 
And then end of turn, Saka enchantment here to Braids. Unless they have removal for it, which they seem to have. Alright, that's too bad, because now we missed out on the opportunity to attack, of course. But then they would have ambushed my Hex Mage otherwise. Opponents with more carrot cakes, and the life gain's also quite relevant here. And of course the card draw with talent. So I think we had a small window to maybe claw back into it with braids, dealing damage without needing to attack. But they had the answer. Disturbing Mirth can maybe hope to find a Viper, and then we can still play it with haste if we level up talent. Just sack of nowhere to run. No Viper. Could go exploring. Opponent destroying the talent now too. Well, certainly gonna go exploring now. And your Encourage. Probably an above average draw. Gives us a way to give creatures haste now that the uh, talent is gone. And our opponent can sack Carrot Cake to once again draw. So yeah. Caretaker's Talent putting in work. They have Fountain Ports plus Sunken Citadel to activate it on the cheap. So yeah, I think this game's probably still too far gone. Definitely don't want to face another Sunfall with Enduring Courage coming up. But just a 5-5 threatening to turn into a creature has kept our creatures at bay. And our opponent has always been able to use their mana elsewhere, so that's a nice upside of having all these activated abilities and instants. Hex Mage down. Surprised they were willing to use late on arms when they know Enduring Courage is coming up. But they might have more answers in hand. And they're even starting to attack. So their opponent has officially turned the corner. Can explore. There's a Viper. Is it too little too late? Probably want to hang on to some of my map tokens now, actually. Yeah, I guess we'll still pass. Don't have a particularly good attack. Happy to trade away the Enduring Courage instead of it getting exiled. Although if it does trade, then Get Lost could technically destroy the enchantment afterwards. And our opponent just had another Sunfall waiting in the wings. Makes another Incubator. And now we don't have haste for the Viper, so it's unlikely to do too much for us. Bone seems to have an immediate answer, get lost, so... Nothing to explore onto. And now it's just two turns with incubators to close out the game. Alright, so yeah, game went pretty much how we thought it would. There were a couple decisions we might have been able to make differently, but I don't think enough to make a huge difference. So this just seems like a tough matchup for us. Alright, good game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand is functional. Can destroy Percussionist to set up Demolition. So play Percussionist on one, turn to Hex Mage, can put the roll on Percussionist and then blow it up. So we're left with a 3-2 Hex Mage. Or we could put the roll token on a Goblin, which is maybe better if we end up drawing a Viper later. Opponent on the red aggro deck. So always going to be a tough matchup when we don't have removal in hand. So Demolition, and then next turn we can Disturbing Mirth, also sacking the Roll Token potentially. Another Gleeful Demolition is most likely going to go to waste, since we don't have other artifacts. Bonan plotting a Slick Shot, so we can keep attacking for now, and then 
yeah, disturbing mirth. Even if we draw into an artifact, we still wouldn't be able to demolition in time. So we can start by attacking. And then disturbing mirth. Again, probably sacking a roll token. And Hex Mage can put a roll on a 1 1 once again. Found a talent. So yeah, talent would have been a nice enabler for demolition. If we had that as a leftover after we play Enduring Courage, we can do some significant damage. So there's a slick shots. Let's see if we're dead. Does Hex Mage block Hardfire Hero? I guess it does. Even Monstrous Rage would still trade here. Opponent with another slick shot. And they are attacking. Alright, we'll take the trade. It's gonna be a giant growth. Well, I was not expecting that one, but I guess they are playing green. So Hardfire Hero survives. Gotta play Enduring Courage. Which is also happy to block if needed. And then another Gleeful Demolition would be perfect. A Viper with Courage on the battlefield is great too. But at 12 we might just die to double slick shot. Manifold Mouse to give Hardfire Trample or Double Strike. I guess if they have a Monstrous Rage it's probably going to be Double Strike and then they can Trample anyway. Well, they're not immediately going for it so they may not have guaranteed lethal. So they were thinking about that for a long time, so it is very much possible they're out of pump spells and if I take it they only have 8 damage and we would actually have lethal on the way back, but that seems very unlikely, so I'll still chump and we'll see what happens. Alright, first strike happens, so we get our enchantment back. And as the dust settles, we just take two damage. And find a percussionist. So it would get a plus two plus so and haste bonus. Can play talents and then still move the equipment. But it's probably not gonna be quite enough here. I guess we'll still try. Opponent only has one blocker, so if they are on empty, they could be dead. And then I could just level up the talents instead of paying two. Although if they somehow do have interaction and end up trading for percussionist, then we might still exile some one mana play, but no, opponent explodes. So they might have been on empty after all, and we managed to get there. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keepable hand. Some early removal, plenty of sacrifice fodder to set up an early Rotten Mouth Viper. Turn one freebooter. Turn two could start with offering. We kind of want to keep our roll token so we can sack it to the viper as opposed to putting the roll token on freebooter and then sacking it to offering opponent immediately exiling our one drop so i guess now we can freebooter and then roll token on the freebooter can put an upkeep stop in case we were to somehow torch the tower with bargain looking for land Opponent indeed on mono white tokens with carrot cake. So, yeah, I don't really want to sack Freebooter to Fanatical Offering here. So I think I just draw and hope to find a land. Gleeful Demolition doesn't quite work. So, I guess we'll hit for three. And then, probably still offering the Freebooter itself. In which case, I could have maybe attacked for one. But that way we'll also get an artifact for demolition. 
and bought him another freebooter. So couldn't find a land for a turn. Could still cast a demolition on our map token here. It would give me three one ones, and then next turn we can play the Viper. Although I'm not even sure how good Viper is going to be in this matchup, since they're likely to have answers for it. So I think we may as well wait here. Can always demolition next turn. Opponent is playing black as well. Says no to Enduring Innocence. Would be good to exile with Torture Tower and another Laydown Arms. So they're making it difficult to get the Viper in play. But hopefully that means fewer answers to the Viper once we actually do deploy it. Braids doesn't really want to sack an artifact when they have a carrot cake out. So it is probably just double demolition. And then I could still play a Viper. And hopefully it pays off. And our opponent explodes, so I guess it did. Opponent out of answers for the Viper. Alright, so we got to see our Rotten Mouth Rakdos in action. And yeah, the deck's got some very cool synergies. I was quite pleased with the Disturbing Mirth. And nowhere to run being removal that leaves behind an enchantment is perfect here as well. And even though Enduring Courage can be a little bit too slow for the current meta, it's still quite nice in a deck with Gleeful Demolition and Rotten Mouth Viper, which you always want to give haste to when possible. So yeah, the deck's pretty decent, although in the current meta it still has some pretty bad matchups, which probably means I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for the best of one ladder right now. The mono red matchup doesn't seem particularly great since we only have six instant speed removal spells, probably need more to really improve that matchup. Against the aura strategies, if our opponent can make a creature large enough, then it's difficult for our removal to answer them, and then especially if they can also give it a lifelink, it's going to be very difficult to outrace them, so that matchup is also pretty tough, although can potentially be addressed after sideboarding by maybe bringing in more copies of Nowhere to Run. And then the control matchups playing Sunfall, those are going to be pretty difficult as well, since our deck usually isn't fast enough to win before turn 5, and then once Sunfall comes down it's pretty difficult to recover, so that's a matchup where we would need some uh, targeted discard spells like Duress to take those away, and then we might have a better shot. So in the current best of 1 ladder I would not really recommend this, but it could potentially be fine in best of 3, where you can bring in some more tools out of the sideboard, and the deck can potentially adapt to beat various strategies. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.